All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to make a quick progress report video here um, on Season of Discovery, at least. You know me, though. Quick progress report or quick video in general just means 30 minutes at a minimum. Um, so behind the scenes, what's going on is I'm still trying to get together with uh, Dracova and Talrain, basically, in the same place. Dracova finally got some PvP experience in Season of Discovery, so we should be able to do a better Pallycast video once we get these... Uh, two dinguses in the same place at the same time we can have a conversation there's another guy who wants to have a conversation or do a pally cast here pretty soon that i'll probably do but i've never done one with him before um concerning uh raid tanking or just like uh um, pve stuff in general that's usually uh minnow um minnow's deal doing the whole raid tanking thing uh so usually i try to stay out of that wheelhouse i'm not a, a super guy uh the main guy for that but since, you know, there's some overlap between extreme, the extreme end of PvP theory crafting and the extreme end of PvE theory crafting. I figured um, I talk about that a little bit in this video here. Um, there will be some overlap between PvP uh, uh, stuff and uh, PvE stuff in this video. Uh, some things I just wanted to mention uh, real fast. But first off, uh, let's actually get on the server and do a quick progress report here. So I just uploaded a video of how I've been making my gold. I finally made enough gold that uh, uh, Dracova's happy with how much gold he has. Talrain's happy with how much gold he has, although he could use some more gold. I'm actively making him uh, gold. And I finally bought my uh, Plains Ring, and I'm pretty decent on the whole gold thing in general. Uh, if you guys don't know, um, yeah, so you can see we're in Crusader Strike. There's my level 25 Paladin. There's all my alts that are doing rested XP. First one to get Hand of Rag wins. We're not having a repeat of Feralina, thank God. And, of course, this is my uh, damn bank alt. So we'll get on the bank alt really fast uh, while I'm I'm setting the stuff up here just so I can grab all the damn gold. Lol. Actually, that's probably a waste of my existence. Uh, yeah, okay. Progress report. Stay focused. Pally time. <laughs> Don't do your errands while recording a video. I forget where I am. I think I'm in... Yeah, so we need to kiss the uh, these dinguses really fast. Slash kiss. Yeah, give you that. All right, cool. So, <clears throat> progress report. Where are we at? I finally got my planes ring. Spent like 160 gold to get it. Uh, give or take. Uh, got various bits of decent... Uh, stamina intellect gear on here. Uh, so I got like three pieces, four pieces of stamina intellect gear. And we're just slowly building out the paladin. Don't have a helm yet, even though Talrain has two of them. Uh, is what it is. Finally got a neck piece today. Um, let's get rid of, of all these these buffs here so I can see what we're working with. That doesn't increase my stats at all, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Uh, so you can see we're um, pretty high up on the, the stamina. Finally got over uh, 1,500 HP, which is, thank God, I think my maximum HP that I'm going to top out as is uh, just under 1,600, so we're getting pretty close there. The uh, Plains Ring definitely helps out there. Um, but yeah, one doll stats, uh, pretty stamina-heavy build. This is a this is a pretty well well geared Paladin uh, for Season of Discovery, uh, believe it or not. Uh, despite the fact that I haven't been uh, getting uh, the drops in raid, so I still got a fair bit of stamina intellect gear. Uh, I'm not going to be talking, right, so for those who don't know, I'm not going to be talking much about gearing paladins in Season of Discovery. That's the information I'm going to keep to myself. Um, I don't mind talking about runes. I don't mind uh, talking about um, general theory crafting, but for the purposes of doing good in PvP tournaments, I'm going to keep um, the ideal paladin gearing uh, to myself and maybe even uh, talent selection uh, to myself, if that makes any sense. Um, why is this? Well, because there's, at this point, there's only one Paladin in the world qualified to actually figure out Paladin gearing and Season of Discovery if Blizzard ever chills the F out with, um, all the little, uh, PvP changes and whatnot that they keep doing. And that is me. Why is that? Well, Dracova, Dracova's not going super hard on Discovery, and he, he, he learns, as you saw from the Pallycast, he learns intuitively, um, from his... What am I trying to say here? Uh, he learns intuitively about what gear to wear and why. So he'll actually have to put the gear on and test things out or get punched in the dick enough and look at the combat log and be like, okay, I need more stamina. I need less this. I could use some more of that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, which means he's not going to be able to actually do the math and predict the future for gearing uh, Paladin PvP-wise. Um, and I can. So it, it is what it is, right? 
So I'm going to keep that little bit of information to myself. So if even if everybody figures out what runes to, to use, if they figure out like you know what talents to use, if they snipe my videos in the subject or whatever, just figure it out on their own. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I'll literally just have like a 10, 10%, 15% better gearing advantage over them just because I know way too much um, and can predict the future way too well. Uh, but let's talk about some stuff uh, really fast here. Uh, one of the things I really want to talk about, yes, I have a hammer of righteousness. Uh, one of the things I really want to talk about is uh, Seal of Martyrdom. So this is where I'm going to transition from the PvP uh, uh, side of things and transition into like the PvE side of things. However, there's going to be some strong overlap uh, talking here about Seal of Martyrdom. Some people were asking me if I know any people who could uh, have guides um, like uh, doing raids and stuff like that, like you know, better DPS and raids and blah, 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 blah. Some people ask me about tanking advice. All right, well, let's do it. Let's talk about Seal of Martyrdom here. Okay, so Seal of Martyrdom, in the grand scheme of things, is basically a worse, uh, yet more consistent Seal of Crusader. She's literally Seal of Blood from from with extra uh, stuff going on. Um, however, uh, there is one interesting thing that we could potentially do in the future, specifically with 1.5 second uh, speed weapons. Um, you can also do this with a slightly... Uh, faster weapons uh, so you could do this with this 1.3 weapon or a 1.4 weapon but ideally you want a, a 1.5 speed weapon so we're talking things like Fluriax, we're talking things like hungering cold if blizzard gives us the equivalent of hungering cold like earlier on in the game i'm talking like a really high damage dealing uh 1.5 uh speed weapon uh, you're going to be looking at one of the most dynamic and interesting uh, tanking weapons in the entire game. Like I'm specifically talking about like a hunger and cold uh, really fast here. Uh, let me pause the video and I'll get out of here because I don't want to have my VPN on uh, while talking about um, – I, I don't want to have – it eats my – it chews through my internet pretty f uh, uh, quickly if I have um, WoW playing while uh, 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 VPN is on. So let me pause the video for a sec, and we're going to go over to Wowhead. And we're actually going to look at weapons like Hunger and Cold and so forth and so on and talk about this. All right, we are back, or we should be. All right, let's pull up Hunger and Cold really fast here. Hungering Cold, yeah. So this is the best one-handed weapon in the entire game. Drops and knacks, blah, blah, blah. You can see it's a 1.5 speed weapon, and she is a tanking weapon. Um, increased swords uh, plus six, that's huge. Uh, stamina for uh, and armor on the damn blade, and she comes with a whopping um, 73 damage per second. And of course, there is also Flurry Axe, which uh, she's a 1.5 speed weapon, uh, but technically she's like 1.3 uh, speed weapon in the grand scheme of things. Both of these weapons work. So the idea here is that you're going to um, uh, generate, or you're going to create a macro to seal twist. Um, a 1.5 speed weapon, uh, um, uh, basically uh, Seal of Righteousness rank 3, and then um, uh, a Seal of Martyrdom, uh, basically every every global cooldown. So you know, all you have to watch out for, you can basically spam the thing, and all you have to watch out for it would be uh, parry procs, and um, uh, like parry haste procs, and uh, any kind of CC. It would be very easy to add into that macro a stop start attack um, element to that. Um, that way, even if you do get parry hasted or you do get CC'd, it, it, it won't stop um, whatsoever. Or you could just uh, um, have a normal macro, and then the shift version of it has the stop start attack uh, macro to it. You can also do this with um, slightly slower weapons. Uh, so, for example, a 1.4, uh, I wouldn't want to do this with a 1.3, but a 1.4 weapon speed would be fine. Um, theoretically, uh, but you have to use the stop start version of it all times. And basically it's, it's every single, um, you could spam the thing because every GCD, as long as you hit it correctly, the GCD is 1.5 seconds and the swing timer is 1.5 seconds. You just spam the damn thing and you can twist the seals over and over and over and over and over again. Um, why the hell might we want to do this? Well, Seal of Righteous Strength 3 is Seal of Righteous Strength 3. It's got a massive spell power ratio behind it. It doesn't care about your, your weapon's attack speed, so it wants to use the fastest one-handed weapon possible. Um, Seal of Martyrdom also has some interesting things behind it. So it's not like I we couldn't do what I'm currently telling you uh, that we can do in Season of Discovery before with weapons in, in Era. The problem was you could only twist Seal of Righteousness Rank 3 and Seal of Crusader Rank 1, and even then they were kind of a little mana-intensive, but... Seal of Righteousness uh, rank, no, damn it, uh, Seal of Command 
As you can see here, um, seal command basically gives you one proc every nine seconds of swing time, uh, give or take. And she has her proc chance gets lower and lower and lower the faster your weapon gets. So by the time you're doing something like this, by the time you're swinging a 1.5 uh, weapon speed with seal command, uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, 1.5 divided by 9. Uh, you can see that it's got almost a 17, not even a 17% chance to proc at 1.5 uh, a second weapon speeds. Um, but also behind Seal of Command, you only had a 20% spell power ratio. So twisting SOR rank 3 into Seal of Command rank 1 uh, over and over and over and over and over again, like I'm describing, just wasn't very good at all. It wasn't worth the talent points. It wasn't worth the mana cost. Um, using Blessing of Kings for aggro was, was, was a hell of a lot better. It was, it was just bad, if, if that makes sense. Seal of Martyrdom, however, uh, has almost double the, the proc value of, of this damn thing. It's definitely like a 90% increase. So if I multiply this by 1.9, that would be a 90% increase. Uh, okay, because I guess it's not quite that much. But you can see that it's all at 30%, it almost has a, a double uh, a proc speed, if that makes any sense. And we can also see here on the chart here that uh, 2.6 is uh, about the about where Seal of Martyrdom is at. So, in other words, uh, Seal of Martyrdom and, uh, and Seal of, of Command. Um, Seal of Command is better if you're swinging a weapon uh, 2.6 speed or higher. And Seal of Martyrdom starts becoming better if you're swinging a weapon uh, um, 2.6 speed or slower. And by the time you get down to Seal of right, uh, 1.5 speeds, which is what we're talking about here, uh, it's getting really, really good really, really fast. Um, there's other uh, interesting things about Seal of Martyrdom. She does have a, a flat... Okay, so I said in a previous video that, that she she has uh, the damage from her subject to armor. That's not true. It's actually holy damage. Um, so I correct myself on that. So she's 30% chance to proc. Her proc is, in fact, holy damage. It will cut through armor. Uh, she has something like a 7% spell power ratio behind her, and it's a flat spell power ratio. Um, which is about the equivalent of a seal of command spell power ratio. I can't tell if it's like 5%, somewhere between 5% and 7%. So I imagine it's it's literally just the 20% of, of seal of command. And then you divide that by, uh, we, we wouldn't divide that. It would be like 20 uh, times 0.3. So she's probably like a 6% spell power ratio, 6-7% spell power ratio, give or take, for seal of martyrdom. But it's a flat spell power ratio. On top of that, Seal of Martyrdom is Seal of Martyrdom, so you're still getting um, a sizable portion of your of your melee DPS added to your attack. Now that might sound pathetic in the grand scheme of things, because I'm basically telling you to wear a bunch of spell power gear um, uh, and to Seal Twist, uh, Seal of Righteous Rank 3 into Seal of Martyrdom. Um, but what you don't know, or you should know if you watch my videos enough, is that um, your two-handed weapon only, repre only represents a relatively small portion of your total uh, DPS as a paladin. So let me go uh, gear planner over here. Let me go paladin. Let me go human. I think the human is geared at, at 60, so I can crank it all the way up. So this is a theoretical uh, 60 paladin build that I've talked about before and or put together. I don't know if I ever showed you guys, but Lord knows I've talked about uh, this damn thing right here. This is for PvP, but there is some overlap between PvP and PvE, so bear with me here. You can see it has uh, over 6,000 HP, unbuffed. Um, it's got no talent points uh, whatsoever in here. She has 18, almost 19% melee crit, unbuffed, no talent points. That's absolutely terrifying. Um, she is doing, on average, about 150 uh, white damage per hit. Uh, blah, 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 blah. She got a good mana bar. She's uh, tanky as all hell. This is a really, really scary paladin. Uh, what the hell is it? It's it's like a mix of like little bits of Avengers, uh, little bits of Marshals, and then uh, like uh, Grand uh, uh, Crusader um, stuff. So Paladin gearing in general, if you don't know, and this is also the same thing in PvE as it is in PvP, is we've discovered over the years that usually the best way to go for Paladin uh, gearing is just get gear that just has all the stats on it. Like this Grand Crusader shoulder piece, right? Strength, stamina, intellect, uh, uh, critical strike, and 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 uh, spell power. 
perfect. Every, just about every Avengers piece is the same way. They just have this beautiful spread of stats, uh, critical strike chance, and spell power. The Marshall's gear is the same thing. So it's just raw stats, spell power, and uh, critical strike chance. And this is this is basically how you want to gear your paladin. Do do not give a flying f about um, about uh, set bonuses. Like literally, don't bother. Um, we just want raw stats. That's all we care about. We just want the raw stats. We just want the raw stats. We just want the raw stats. In season of of, of discovery, we might uh, prioritize the stamina over the stats, but you get the idea. All right, how much spell power does this thing actually have? It's not that much. I think it's like 100. Yeah, it's only got 100 spell power. It wouldn't take much to modify this gear right here with a little bit, with a little bit more Avengers, like a 5 out of 5 Avengers and uh, whatnot to bring it up uh, more into line with what a tanking paladin uh, would prefer to be because uh, you'd want to be a little bit more spell power heavy. But what I want you to observe is the melee damage. So we have Might of Minithil here, which is really, really good. But let's let's look at this for a second, Okay. So we're almost 150, we're like literally 149 uh, uh, white damage with this build. Watch what happens if I switch it to uh, the best one-hander in the game, which is basically going to be Hunger and Cold. So I'm just going to switch from this to Hunger and Cold. Uh, now what the heck, uh, I don't have 25 agility anymore. Uh, that might actually matter. Uh, let's enchant weapon agility, really? Uh, okay, I'll go with it. All right, so let's see how much our DPS went down. Keep in mind, uh, we don't have a shield, but let's just look at this real fast. Okay, so we lost... Did we lose 30 damage? No, we we lost 27. No, we lost 26. Okay, let's say we lost 26. And we come over here. It's going to be about 11% of your damage to go from a two-hander to one-hander. One you lose about 11% damage, DPS, white DPS, going from a one-hander to a two-hander. Now, Season of Discovery is a little bit different because you've got, uh, theoretically, you have Crusader Strike. Theoretically, you have uh, Divine Storm, right? Um, so that changes the math somewhat. But I just want you to be aware of how little damage you lose uh, going from a two-hander uh, to a one-hander. So what is that? We were like 150 and we're like uh, 1204 now, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, 124 divided by 150 equals... So we lost, this is telling me I lost 18% damage, give or take. Uh, okay, so let's, let's try that just for a theoretical possibility. Uh, 18 damage, that'd be 0 0.82, right? 0 0.82. Okay, boom. Okay, cool. So we actually lost a lot more. We don't have a shield on, but we still lost quite a bit. We lost about 18% damage uh, going from that uh, big, bad, scary two-hander to this uh, little rinky-dink uh, one-hander right here. But it's not as much as you would think uh, in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> and uh, for tanking purposes, uh, threat generation is by far the most important. Uh, so you don't really care about losing the DPS all that much. The point is that season of, uh, uh, SOM here is still going to be doing terrifying stuff. Okay, so let's actually look at this uh, a bit. Rather than me just telling you, let me let me actually pull up a calculator. And we'll, we'll do the math on this real fast here. Okay, so we're doing uh, 123 uh, DPS. If I swap this gear around, it would not take much at all for me to suddenly have uh, uh, 250, uh, easily 200 uh, spell power, give or take, uh, probably closer to like 300 spell power at the grand scheme of things. I can already tell you right now that 300 spell power for a paladin is going to cause SOR at 1.5 to do about 100 SOR damage. Um, and I can already uh, tell you what uh, Seal of Martyrdom is going to do. Uh, so your white hit will hit pretty damn hard um, at, uh, what was it? One, one, well, I remember it was like 124. Okay, so your white hit will do like 124 uh, times 1.5 because uh, that's the swing timer and damage. So she'll do uh, under, uh, with armor, she'll probably only do like 150 damage. Uh, but she will do a, a uh, 100 um, holy damage uh, there as well, which is absolutely terrifying. But the more important thing is that we did have that like 186. And I need to take 30% uh, of this times uh, 0.3 equals. This would be your seal of martyrdom damage. And what the hell is our melee? Oh, God, our melee crit is, is terrifying. Okay. <laughs> Didn't factor that in, did you? Damn. All right. Uh, 186. So it's going to be closer to like 200. Yeah, and then times 0.3, uh, give or take. But then again, I guess my critical strike would go down if I went up spell power. It's hard to say. Um, 
Anyways, as you can see, the the SOR rank 3 will be doing something like 150 white and then 100, uh, 100 SOR damage. Uh, but then if you seal twisted martyrdom on top of that, it would basically add a, an, another 60 damage, uh, give or take, because critical strike um, is, is potentially a thing there. And so what that means is uh, minus 150 from this is you're, you're, you're doing about 310 damage every 1.5 seconds, which is legitimately uh, terrifying. Um, but more importantly, uh, we can figure out what percentage, it's, it's like 100 and, yeah, 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 it should be like 160. You're doing like 160 um, uh, holy damage. And this is without any buffs, right? This is without talents. This is without anything uh, going on whatsoever. Uh, so, for example, if SO, improved SOR is actually doing its job now, which sometimes I hear, I hear it is, I hear it isn't, uh, that'd be plus 15% on the SOR. Um, uh, we know one-handed uh, weapon specialization will increase uh, all damage you do practically uh, with a, while you're wielding a one-handed weapon, so that's like plus 10% if you came all the way down here uh, to pick this up. There is the Sanctity Aura, which I suggest some other Paladin has uh, if you're tanking, for example. If you came all the way down here uh, for the one-handed weapon specialization, you might as well pick up Holy Shield while, while you're here. Um, you're planning on using a one-hander anyway, and Holy Shield is, is probably going to do its damn job. Um, this seal twisting, of course, comes at the expense of Aegis, but Aegis is actually really, really bad right now. Uh, they really need to uh, rewrite Aegis quite badly. Uh, so, for example, Aegis just says it increases the block value by 30%, and it's like, whoopty effing do. Um, when I originally read this, I thought it increased the block value of my shield by 30% base. Not, not block value, the block chance of my uh, uh, by 30%, and then gave me an extra readout. If it said that, I'd be on board with um, Aegis, but as it stands, you're better off um, taking Divine Storm um, or uh, Seal of Martyrdom. And, of course, we're talking about Twisting Seal of Martyrdom here. Um, so yeah, 30% of your weapon damage, uh, it can crit, it is holy, it'll cut through the armor, it has a base spell power ratio behind it, which I forgot to add into the math here. Uh, we can do that real fast, so you'll probably have about 500, uh, give or take, spell power. That's a very, very um, simple mark. If you had flasks and stuff, it would be even higher, I think. I don't know why we would want to go higher, but whatever, we'll say 500. 500 is a really good range. Because you're going to get 200 from uh, Crusader, and then you might have 250 on your gear, give or take, and then there might be a Paladin around with Sancta Diora, like that kind of a deal. Um, times 0 0.07, so that's taking 7% of that. So it's going to add 35 holy damage uh, to the SOR, or the Seal of Martyrdom hit. So the Seal of Martyrdom um, suddenly shot up, uh, increased damage by almost fi um, 50%. Uh, over 50% just because you're doing a spell power build rather than a melee build. And of course, SOR is going to be kicking around there for like 105 uh, or, or more. Uh, easy, easy 105 or more. So already you're looking at like 200 holy damage uh, per 1.5 seconds. Uh, we actually want to divide that by 1.5. Why is this important? Well, let's look at this. for Okay, so uh, you're doing about 133 holy damage a second which is really, really good from your one-handed uh, twisting alone. Uh, where the hell is our Hand of Reckoning? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Fury is increased to 80%, and Righteous Fury causes you... Okay, increased to 80%. What does the talent say? Uh, talent, I think, also increases... Ugh. Oh, we got this? Cool. Uh, talent increases it by 50%, so that'd be 130%. So, as far as threat generation, ugh, what's going on here, boys? Oh, okay. Come on. Take it out of there. No, I don't want it in there. Oh, out, 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 out. Okay. Um, so, we'd have to multiply this by 2.3 for 130%. Yes? Okay, cool. Yeah, so from a threat generation purpose, uh, purposes, this is without consecration, without any anything else going on. And, of course, I have to add, like, uh, the 150 white damage uh, going on in there. But it wasn't 150 white. It was 150 white per 1.5 seconds. Whatever. So you're going to easily have over 400 uh, threat per second on the boss. And this is without Consecration. Consecration is going to easily uh, add, let me think, easily it's going to add like another 150 uh, to that without breaking a sweat, probably even more. You probably got like uh, 75 um, holy damage per Consecration tick. 
Um, already you can see here your threat per second is probably pretty terrifying um, and perfectly serviceable for you as a paladin in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, so Seal Twisting, um, Seal of Righteous Rank 3, and Martyrdom are on the table for me, uh, both from a PvP and a PvE perspective, if that makes any sense. Um, other than the Seal Twisting of these uh, dinguses at 1.5 speed or 1.4 speed or 1.3 speed or whatever speed you want to do it, uh, but you'd have to use the stop-start attack macro, um, is... Uh, yeah, if you're not using this particular method to seal twist and do damage that way, then you, you've got to go Divine Storm, uh, you got to go uh, Crusader Strike. The other interesting thing about the whole seal twisting uh, meta, um, the 1.5c seal twisting meta, theoretically, is you wouldn't want Crusader Strike anymore. Uh, Crusader Strike at one point at 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 two point eight speed, which is or actually it's two point nine at two point nine speed, which is the slowest uh, one handed that you can possibly wield. Um, Crusader Strike is fine if you're tanking with a two hander. Crusader Strike is even better, <coughs> but this allows you to pick up the goodies like uh, Hand of Reckoning, for example. It also lets you wield a damn shield, which lets you take other goodies like Holy Shield. It lets you ha have have readout, whereas the two hander wouldn't let you do that. Um, so this might be the way of, of the tanking future, if that makes any sense. Uh, it also might cause you to do crazy things like come down here and pick up Holy Shock instead or something. I don't know. Or go da uh, deep down into the ret tree, uh, for reasons unknown, uh, maybe vengeance. Um, if you're twi seal twisting SOR and seal of martyrdom and you have frost oil on your weapon because frost oil is going to times two proc with SOR, uh, and it's regardless of weapon speed, you're going to have 100% uh, uh, Vengeance uptime at all times. So it might be the case that you come all the way down here and you pick up Vengeance, and then you just try to get as deep into whatever uh, other tree that you can possibly uh, get your hands into. Um, I really don't know what's best uh, for Threat Per Second, but one thing I can tell you is that a perfectly viable and extremely serviceable option for Paladin tanking in Season of Discovery is going to be twisting SOR Rank 3 into uh, Seal of Martyrdom. For PvP purposes, this is also probably the future for Time on Target Paladin. Like, straight up. Why? Um, because even though Crusader Strike is really, really good, um, Hand of Reckoning is also extremely powerful for Time on Target Paladins, especially in this extremely bursty meta. So, for example, if this gets any kind of buffs or gets uh, even remotely better than it is now, uh, if, um, if if this 20% goes to like a 25% or like a 30%, like, oh man, now we're talking from a PvP perspective. Uh, this thing is really good for PvP. The problem is it's opportunity costed against Crusader Strike right now, and there aren't any good like one-handed uh, time on target uh, style options currently. Um, Divine Storm, of course, is amazing. Uh, so, but... See, martyrdom is going to be the, the future, right? From from a PvP rune perspective, martyrdom is the future. Not Divine Storm, martyrdom is the future. Uh, for Reckoning Paladins, at least. Because twisting martyrdom uh, with Seal of Justice is going to be more powerful than Seal of Command. If you're a Seal of Command Paladin, however, uh, Divine Storm is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, Horn of Lordaeron uh, uh, later on might be uh, straight up Biss. Um, it has some serious potential with all, all the uh, futuristic buffs behind it. So she's definitely on the radar uh, for what she can possibly do with uh, Blessing of Kings and with uh, uh, Divine Strength and all that stuff, right? Uh, but again, you lose um, you lose Divine Storm, but all, all the gains you get from uh, Horn of Lordaeron don't really matter if you're swinging a one-handed weapon. But if we can twist Seal of Martyrdom, and we have it for the bombs, um, yeah, this is, this is the, the way of the future. So, yeah, so for... How do I put this? So basically, there's going to be one style of paladin in the future from a PvP perspective that wants to use the two-handers and Crusader Strike and Divine Storm. And it's also going to be that way in raids uh, for tanking, right? There will be a, 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 um, the the Fury Prot uh, um, version of, of a classic wild paladin tank is going to have Crusader Strike. It's going to have a Divine Storm. It's going to wield a two-hander. It's going to tank that way. Um... And that's going to be one version of a PvP Paladin as well. Uh, the other version of a PvP Paladin, the time on target, the, the future of time on target, uh, you're probably going to take some weird stuff. Uh, like you'll probably end up taking like Avenger Shield. You'll end up taking uh, Hand of Reckoning because you're going to be using a really fast one-hander. 
Uh, Crusader Strike is nice, but Hand of Reckoning is probably worth more. But then again, Crusader Strike is 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 a, is a great backup weapon. But you can also easily gear swap um, out of Hand of Reckoning and into Crusader Strike uh, as the fight starts wearing on, if if that makes any sense. So in the later stages of fighting, when your enemy is is like low on cooldowns and so forth and so on, it becomes very easy to Avenger Shield slow them, six seconds stun them, run away in a straight line, whatever you got to do, uh, swap out of Hand of Reckoning and into Crusader Strike for the the more Crusader Strike is more about endurance than than damage for any kind of one-hander build uh, that you're going for. Uh, but at the same time, you might as well break out uh, the two-hander in those longer endurance fights at that point and beat the crud out of them. Uh, with Crusader Strike and Divine Storm into Hell with Seal of Martyrdom, uh, we don't need that anymore. But from a pure time on target perspective, just sitting on your enemy for an extended period of time, twisting SOR rank 3 into Seal of Martyrdom is going to cause results. Your enemy will not enjoy the attentions that you are giving them, and it's also super, super good in Wreck Bombs. Uh, it'll get even better if you can pick up Eye for an Eye, so there's going to be some weird talent uh, stuff in the future. Um, so, for example, I have this, uh, I'll show you this one talent build uh, really fast. I have this talent build that was, was it was rejected uh, by Dracova um, in the past, in like era, uh, but it's always been on my mind, uh, theoretically. So this is a, a Ret Reckoning build that can actually heal in combat. I'll just show it to you guys really fast. We're going to take Kings uh, these days. Yeah, we definitely want four points in here. The, the, cre the key thing here is that you're only putting eight points in Holy. So we're only putting three points into Spiritual Focus. But we're getting three out of three improved concentration, and sadly, we're only putting two points in Hammer of Justice. I think there's a spare point to put in Hammer of Justice later, but we are getting five out of five Reckoning, and then we just stop. And you can see we have... Um, how many points we got left over? We should have points left over. Why are you not telling me? Do I have 25 points left over? What's going on here? Or, uh, you guys see what leftover points are? I want to point to the leftover points and say, see how many points I have left. That's really annoying. All right, whatever. I can't find it. Anyways, we'll continue uh, on down. We're going to do Benediction. Uh, we're going to do uh, Improved Judgment because SOM is actually kind of nuts, and Improved Judgment might be the way of the future. Uh, doing Improved Seal of the Crusaders not the worst idea in the world. Uh, a little bit of parry. We actually don't like parrying uh, with the seal twisting, so this is probably what you're going to do. I'm not joking. Um, but who knows, right? It's the future. Uh yeah, you don't want to twist seal a command. That's a terrible idea. Uh, basically, what you're doing is you're coming down here and you have enough points uh, to get uh, eye for an eye. And then, yeah, then your last point goes right here. Now, you could put your last point here, or you could put your last point right here, or you could put one point into Blessing a Sanctuary, right? This last point is very flexible. But as you can see, we did get eye for an eye. We do have ret Reckoning. This makes us a ret Reckoning Paladin. Uh, we do have all the goodies, uh, the really good stuff from, um, from the ret tree. Uh, but what this concentration aura thing is going to do for us is, yes, it locks down our aura, so we can't use a, a resistance aura, typically. Um, but this will give us a 50% pushback, uh, we'll ignore interruptions 50% of the time, which is, uh, really, really good for a more durable, a more durability-centric paladin. Uh, and then you have three points in Spiritual Focus, which will give us a 92% chance to resist pushbacks. So as long as we have Concentration Aura up, and we only have three points over here, we have a 92% chance that we ignore pushbacks. If we put one more point in here, it's 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 106% chance to resist pushbacks with the improved Concentration Aura up. Um, in theory, you could, uh, you could put one point here, strip a point out of here, and put the point over here. So now this is going to be uh, uh, 45%, and then this is, so this is like, this is, so you, yeah, you have 100, you have 101% pushback humidity now, but I don't have, I, I've only got a 10% chance to resist uh, uh, interrupts as opposed to a 15% chance to resist interrupts. So it's kind of this weird little season to taste thing, and in the grand scheme of things, uh, you, your, your point might be better off in like Blessing a Sanctuary or something, even though we're definitely going to be using Kings uh, in Season of Discovery. So you got this one floating point that is around. This build was rejected by Dracova in um, in Classic Era, but I'm convinced that a lot of the fringe Paladin builds centered around picking up Eye for an Eye are going to come back with a vengeance in Season of Discovery, uh, just because uh, if 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 they keep the game the way it is, where um, our enemy spell casts, our, the enemy healing is super mana efficient, so we can't engage them in a mana war. 
Uh, the enemy spellcasting is super mana efficient, so we can't engage them in a mana war. And I'm a fucking paladin, so my uh, holy lights cost a, a shit ton of mana, and I can't really outheal the enemy very well like I used to be able to. So if you just can't deal with a mana war, you're going to have to kill them. And killing somebody these days means one of two things. It means either taking Reckoning, it means taking Eye for an Eye, or it means, uh, and or it means taking Rebuke, right? Like one of the two. Like end or, end or taking Rebuke. And um, so if you have Eye for an Eye and you don't have Reckoning, you're definitely taking Rebuke. You should have Repent, definitely take Rebuke, because you're just not going to want to tell people to shut the hell up when they're trying to heal themselves. <clears throat> But if you have uh, Reckoning, you're just going to try to kill them. If you have Eye for an Eye and Reckoning, then you you can super try to kill them. In fact, what you can do is you can just... Uh, that build that I just showed you can just stand there and, and out-heal most of the incoming damage from like an Elemental Shaman. Uh, you'll slowly start losing life. Like You might lose like 10% life a second in the grand scheme of things because they will out-DPS you. But the amount of Reflect damage the Shaman will be taking from Eye for an Eye and all the charges they're giving you to Reckoning... It's only a matter of, of seconds before you're just going to walk over them and walk over there and delete the shaman out of existence, uh, just because he's 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 taking way too much reflect damage from eye for an eye and he's taking uh, he's giving you way too many rec charges. So that's how that works theoretically. Now let's talk about shock eye. All right, shock eye, as the name suggests, basically we put 31 talent points down here and pick up holy shock. This is another fringe paladin build uh, that I came up with. Um, and then you also pick up uh, Eye for an Eye. So let's uh, see what this looks like really fast. Do, 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 do. We've got the three goodies there. Put the one point in there. Get the Anti-Fear. We'll pick up Illumination. We get the uh, two points there. There should be one more point to spend somewhere here. Am I crazy? Weird. All right. Oh, I guess I've never gone this deep before. Yeah, three out of three. We'll go five out of five for this, and we pick up a point in Holy Shock, and you can see we've got how many points left over? I think it's three. Yeah, then you put like three points in readout in case you have to fight like a rogue or, or something stupid like that. Or you can just keep putting them in in uh, the ret tree, but you, you don't really pick up anything uh, out of this. Maybe improve ret aura. <laughs> might do more against a rogue than uh, readout. Uh, you don't have kings. Uh, you're missing a lot of good things that you might really enjoy. Uh, you can uh, pick up Seal of Command if you're really into uh, Seal of Command for whatever reason. If you don't want Martyrdom, uh, you want to go Crusader Strike, you want to go Divine Storm, and in that case, you want to use the two-hander, you want to go Seal of Command. Perfectly viable. you got these uh, uh, free floating uh, three points that you can basically do whatever the hell you want with. Uh, but you do have Holy Shock, and more importantly, you have Eye for an Eye. Now, this is an, an era-centric build, okay? This... If we were talking Classic WoW, this would not be good in, like, Phase 1 Classic WoW, Phase 2 Classic WoW, Phase 3 Classic WoW. This wouldn't even be good in Phase 4, Phase 5 Classic WoW. This is a Phase 6 Classic WoW. This is a Nax-geared talent build for PvP in Classic World of Warcraft. Why is this? Well, because in Nax, all the casters, they didn't go up in spell power at all in Nax gearing, but they went up in, like, um... Uh, spell critical strike chance by like uh, a, by like a massive amount, like like ten percent or more, uh, from all the Nax gearing. And Season of Discovery is kind of doing something similar, where they're handing out critical strike chance like it's candy. In an environment like that, reckoning starts getting devalued, even though it still is amazing. And eye for an eye starts becoming uh, way more valuable, because how these builds are supposed to work is you you sit there and you you heal yourself. You let the spellcasters blast on you. You survive their nonsense. You just keep healing yourself. You might be able to outheal the, their damage. You might not be able to outheal their damage. But the, the the one thing you can definitely do is outheal their damage to the point where they've taken so much reflect damage that they have to stop and heal themselves or die. And that or die one is where you basically make your move. And either you get the, the healing advantage and you just heal the full, or you move in on them and you try to delete them out of existence, right? These are all fringe paladin specs uh, that are likely going to be um, a big deal in Season of Discovery is basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, some of these are good for time on target. Uh, some of these are not good for time on target. Uh, this Holy Shock build would probably prefer to have Avenger's Shield uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's really hard to say if this would want a, uh, um, eh, 
Divine uh, Avenger Shield or Rebuke, like one of the two. But you're probably definitely using a two-hander. You're probably picking up Seal of Command uh, because why the hell not? And, of course, you have uh, all these uh, free talent points floating around. All right. So I'm going to end the video here. Uh, hopefully I didn't bore you guys too much with the PvP stuff, and hopefully I didn't bore you guys too much with the PvE stuff. Uh, but that's basically what I'm seeing in Season of Discovery uh, right now. Uh, there are there are reasons to wield a one-handed weapon speed, but specifically it's like 1.4 and 1.5 weapon speed. We can work with 1.4. We're not losing enough attack damage by holding our auto attack uh, to be able to twist it with Seal of Martyrdom. Um, other than that, though, you really want to to try to use the slowest one-hander or the slowest two-hander possible uh, to get the job done. There are some serious opportunity costs in the runes currently. Um, our single-target healing is absolute garbage. I want to punch Blizzard in the dick. I'm so mad at this. So, for example, every other healing class in the game got better at at their own personal survivability like in a 1v1 duel shaman survivability increased with their runes uh priest survivability increased with their runes um druid survivability increased with his, their runes paladin didn't do anything like what the, what what the f do we have we've got literally divine sacrifice and uh which only helps everybody else and beacon of light this does absolutely nothing to increase my personal healing capability in a 1v1 fight, which means that if I'm spamming Holy Lights and the enemy Shaman is doing... Um, I thought about this. An enemy Shaman at 60 can can Lava Burst me, Chain Lightning me, and Earth Shock me on rotation every 6 seconds. Every 6 seconds they can go Blow, Blow, and, and, and shut the hell up. Blow, Blow, shut the hell up. Blow, Blow, shut the hell up. You know what I can do in response as a paladin? I can do one holy light every six fucking seconds. Maybe I can put a flash of light in there. Maybe it's one holy light and one flash of light every six seconds. That's what I can do as a paladin. That's also what I can only do as a paladin if I don't have improved concentration aura. Uh, Lava Burst at level 60, as it's currently written, is going to do over 3,000 damage. Okay, That's going to take up my... my um, that, that's going to counter my Holy Light heal alone. And then Chain Lightning is just going to do like an extra 2,000 damage to me, uh, give or take. And Earth Shock is going to do like an extra uh, 1,000 damage on average. Which means every 6 seconds, it means there's no fucking way I can outheal the attentions of a Shaman. Which in current era, uh, I can definitely outheal the attentions of a Shaman as a Holy Paladin um, at certain distances, if that makes any sense. I can outheal them. But really, I'm not out healing them so much as as I'm out mana efficient eff efficiencying them. So what happens is if I do nothing but heal on my Holy Reckoning Paladin, and, and an Elemental Shaman does nothing but damage to me, and I'm heal locked, right? Like he's doing everything his power to, to stop me from being able to heal. I'm doing everything in my power to be able to heal. What will happen is um, I'll slowly lose life over time. Like my life will get lower and lower and lower and lower because the enemy, I'm taking more damage uh, than I can heal over time. But then the shaman will go, will run out of mana, and then I'll have like twenty percent mana left. The shaman will be oom, and and things get uh, far more interesting uh, very quickly. That's how you survive being heal locked against a shaman. Traditionally, um, is you just out heal them. But it looks really, really sus when you're doing it. Uh, currently, their mana efficiency is so high though that they're just going to kill you. And there's there's not a damn thing you can do to out heal it because season of discovery hasn't given us anything to improve our single target healing. Uh, what this basically means at that point is if they do not give us anything to improve our seal single target healing, the only thing we have right now that, it, 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 that improves our single target healing is Hand of Reckoning. And that's only uh, when we're about 40% life, uh, give or take. And that is a 25% increase in our healing in the grand scheme of things. It might be enough to stabilize. It might not be enough to stabilize. Uh, it's probably not enough to stabilize. Lord knows you're like a, a couple back-to-back -back crits from being deleted out of existence. It's it's not a good time. If they give us like... Um, uh, er, not Hand of Reckoning. It's like... Uh, it's not Aegis. I forget. Uh, the, the thing that they, that they kind of uh, spoiled in the future. 
I should know it. You know, instead of dying, it brings you back to life. Uh, or you heal yourself to 35% life, and usually it gives you a damage reduction below 35% life. If they keep giving us damage reductions below 35% life, that would fix the problem and make it far more viable in PvP to, to do this healing style. Uh, but if they don't, the next best alternative is to try to kill them with Reckoning. Or better, better yet still, is you just make sure you have eye for an eye. Whatever the hell build you're running for PvP, have eye for an eye. Why? Because, yeah, the Shaman's going to do damage to me, and I'm going to be trying to out-healing it. How, yeah, out-heal it. They're going to do damage. I'm going to try to out-healing it. But flash forward like 12, 18 seconds of this back and forth later, and the Shaman's going to be like 50% life. Uh, I don't know if you know what our Wreck Bomb looks like at level 60, but... They could probably be at 80% life, and they're not going to survive a wreck bomb, especially with Seal of Martyrdom, because we've been talking about uh, this is me flexing with Seal of Martyrdom this, this entire time. They're not surviving a wreck bomb. Uh, a wreck bomb currently does between 7,000 and 10,000 damage on paper. Um, even if you have a 50% ar uh, armored target, it's going to do upwards of um, like 7,000 HP damage in a full bomb. Uh, even in just a glancing bomb, meaning like you, uh, like a, a bomb where you where you caught them with a grenade, then you hodged on them for like three seconds. So like uh, a bomb plus three seconds of, of time on target um, where they can't do anything. Uh, that's that's easily over 6,000 damage uh, against a 50% armored target. Just because there's too much holy damage coming out, uh, it, it's just disgusting. So we're going to be deleting them out of the distance. So the next best thing, if you can't um, outheal the nonsense, is going to be eye for an eye. And this, this was the case in Era and Nax, uh, believe it or not. Uh, because um, if, you don't have, if you don't have really good gear in Era, you're not going to be able to out-heal the attentions of, of many a class. And then the next best thing always was eye for an eye for that. Okay, so worst case scenario, you're taking Reckoning. Uh, worst, worst case scenario, you're taking eye for an eye. And it just is what it is. Um, the other thing, of course, is the Deep Ret Paladins. They have Eye for an Eye, so that they have that option of doing the 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 um, the heal lock uh, a gameplay. Uh, Deep Ret Paladins, however, since they get Repent, I talked about this with the Dracova cast. They don't need um, not chest, his legs. They don't need Avenger Shield as much. Then, because they don't need Avenger Shield, it's highly suggested that they take Rebuke. A rebuke in combination with um, uh, seal twisting and stopping your auto attack of seal of justice. Uh, you can shut down um, hard cast heals uh, like like a madman, and basically you would just sit on them and uh, not let them cast any heals. You just physically have to get within contact of them. Uh, worst case scenario with this build, getting in physical contact with the enemy might you might be relying on eye for an eye for that. So, for example, you're healing yourself, they're doing damage, you're healing yourself, they're doing damage. At some point, your enemy is going to have to stop and heal themselves or be at extreme risk of this paladin just walking over there, deleting them out of existence. Which, of course, is the perfect time for you to heal yourself to full and then to walk over there. And now, yeah, you can't delete them out of existence, uh, because you, uh, but you're on top of them with rebuke. And they're not going to be happy about that at all, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, this is me talking about talents for PvP, but the gearing is going to be far more um, interesting and dynamic. Uh, again, hopefully, PvEers, I didn't bore you too much with this PvP stuff, and you PvPers, uh, hopefully, I didn't bore you too much with the PvE stuff. Uh, I don't really have too much else to say about the PvE side of things, other than uh, tank paladins kind of suck balls right now. Uh, healing paladins super suck balls right now, and uh, for self-healing purposes in PvP, we super suck balls right now. The only real upside we have as Paladins is we are doing a kind of redonkulous amount of damage right now. So when we do get on people, uh, we tend to just kind of cut them to pieces before they can do anything. All right, well, I'm going to end the video here, and uh, Deus Volt, boys.